Greetings, Zero here, and welcome back to the, uh, well, monotype tier list for Pokemon. This time we're going to be talking about Fire and Leaf Green. So, I'm going to keep this rather short with the explanation. This is to discuss how viable each type is in a monotype run of Fire and Leaf Green, assuming vanilla gameplay, with a couple of exceptions. We'll get to that later. Anyways, though, a uh, quick overview of the categories. Top is Dominant. These are types that I consider to be either overpowered or just consistently very, very good. Great refers to things that are, well, generally pretty good overall. Maybe overpowered at a couple of points. Average, it's so-so. It might struggle at some points, but it'll do well at others. Subpar, these are going to be fairly challenging, generally speaking. Difficult are runs that are hard enough that you're probably going to need a little bit of luck. Or you're just really going to have a roadblock at some point. And then impossible refers to types that you can't actually legitimately start without hacking. But we'll discuss those types anyway in the context of what you would do if you could hack it in. So, starting off with bug type, doing this in alphabetical order. Oh, and also we're going to talk about which version I recommend for each one. So, Bug is going to go into subpar. It's not as bad as Ruby, Sapphire, and Emeralds because you have some better Pokemon for offense. And I'm recommending Leaf Green version for this one, specifically because you can get access to Pinsir. I think Pinsir is a little bit better than Scyther is, just in the context of this particular run. But if you, well, if you can get access to Scizor via trading with the Metal Coat in the post game, you might want to run that instead. Um, other than that, well, so, uh, besides that, heavily relying on TMs, you're going to have bad tight matchups, bad move pools, low base stat totals. Recommended team is going to be Butterfree. You're going to need this one to take on Brock, because it's the only one that's going to beat him. Beedrill, Venomoth, either Scyther, Sizzle, or Pinsir. Again, these are version exclusive. And then Heracross and Ariados, which you can get in the post game. Okay, now we're moving on to Dark Types. Dark Types are impossible. You can't legitimately get a Dark Type before facing Brock. In fact, you can't get a Dark Type in Vanilla Fire and Leaf Green before getting into the Hall of Fame getting the National Dex. The only Pokemon that you would theoretically be able to get would be Umbreon. But there's one problem. Well, actually, two. One is Fire and Leaf Green don't have a clock. So... Time-based evolutions don't work anyway. But on top of that, Fire and Leaf Green do something that I don't think any game has done since then, where it will block a Pokemon that evolves into a post-Gen 1 evolutionary form from evolving until you get the natural decks. Like, if you try to evolve Golbat to Crobat or Chansey to Blissey, it'll stop evolving if you don't have the natural decks. It's stupid. Now, that said, there are ROM hacks to change this. Um, one I'm going to bring up is a fire and throwback. Now, you'll still need to hack to get EV beforehand, but you will be able to evolve into Umbreon before you get to the Hall of Fame. And it's going to be a solo run, pretty much, until you get the National Dex, so that's why I consider it subpar, if you were to, if it was possible. And, well, there are exactly six Dark Types you have available in that hack, those being Umbreon, Houndour, Houndoom, Sneasel, Murkrow, and Tyranitar. So, yeah. Anyways, dark, ty uh, dark types are out of the way. Let's talk about Dragon. Dragon is also impossible, and it's not going to be as good as it is in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, but it would still be dominant just because of how powerful Dragonite is. You'd have to hack Indratini. It would be a slow start, but once you get it evolved and get some proper TMs for it, it'll be really, really good. Uh... Really, you'd only really want to use Dragonite and Dragonair. If you can get Kingdra in the post game, good. Otherwise, forget it. Now we move on to Electric type. Uh, this is going to go into Average. Now, you'd think normally, normally Electric type would be great because there's only one type weakness, which is Ground. But, well, the problem is there's a lot of Ground types in Gen 1 and its remakes. In particular, you're going to have an absolutely brutal start against Brock. Because, well, like Ash in the anime, your only real option is Pikachu. 
So, uh, yeah, good luck with that. But if you do manage to get past him, then uh, it's largely going to be smooth sailing, except for various ground types like Giovanni's Pokemon. Your best counter to that would be Hidden Power. You want a Pokemon that is Hidden Power Grass, Water, or Ice type. Um, so for that, just catch a bunch of Meowth, because they can pick up Hidden Power via their pickup ability. And just test your Pokemon to see if any of them have Hidden Power, Grass, Water, or Ice, because that'll be helpful to cover your weakness. Also, there is no Light Ball. In Fire and Leaf Green, so there's no reason not to evolve Pikachu as soon as you can, because basically you'll learn most of the moves that it, that you'll want by the time it's in its mid twenties anyway. So, which would be around the time you're going to get a Thunderstone. So, yeah. Uh, recommended team is going to be Raichu, Electrode, Magneton, Jolteon, Electabuzz, or Zapdos. Now, in the post game, you can put Raikou on the team. If you start off with Squirtle. But there's a couple caveats. One is you have to solve the... Uh, was it the Seville Canyon puzzle in the Savvy Islands? Secondly, there's a bug with the Roamers in Gen 3, which gives them very, very low IV, so their stats are shit. And be there's another bug that is unique to the Legendary Beast in Fire and Leaf Green, where if they use Roar or run away... Uh, they will never reappear again. So if you're going to use that, just use a Master Ball. And you can replace any Pokemon on the team with it. I don't recommend it because, again, they're kind of bad. Fairy type, this is easy. Because that didn't exist in Gen 3. It's impossible. If you want to do a pseudo type, you're limited to the Clefairy, Jigglypuff, Snubble, Mirror Lines, and Mr. Mind, basically. Also, you wouldn't be able to get any of those prior to fight fighting Brock anyway. So you would have to hack it in. Oh, and one more thing on on electric types. I recommend doing it in Fire Red because Electabuzz is is version exclusive to Fire Red. So moving on to fighting types. Uh, this is going to be average. Struggles a bit in the late game against Koga and Sabrina. But generally pretty decent. They have high attack power. They're bulky. Although they do generally lack special attack. And, uh, well, the only version that you can really do this legitimately in is Leaf Green, because Mankey is version exclusive. Um, otherwise, you'd have to hack it in if you're doing Fire Red. So, Pokemon I recommend for this are going to be Primate, Machoke, or Machamp, if you can trade. Poliwrath, Hitmonlee, this one I recommend getting before the Hall of Fame. Either Hitmonchan or Hitmontop, which I would recommend getting in the, well, just breed Hitmonlee with a ditto to get a Tyro gang. They're both kind of shit, but they're there. Um, and Heracross. Moving on to fire types. Uh, yeah, like Ruby, Sapphire, and Edible, this is going to be subpar. Poor type coverage, bad move pools, lots of water types. Most of the fire types are locked to the late game. And to add insult to injury, lots of fire types available in Fire and Leaf Green are strong physical attackers, but because the physical special split doesn't exist yet, they're gimped. Um, so, Pokemon I rec recommend for this is going to be Charizard, Ninetales. Uh, for that reason, I would recommend doing this in Leaf Green version. Flareon, Rapidash, Magmar. That's the other reason I recommend doing this in Leaf Green, because that's also version exclusive. And Moltres. Although Moltres is a very late addition to the game, you you might not even want to bother with it. It's kind of redundant because of Charizard. But I guess if you don't want to put Fly on Charizard, you could put it on Moltres. Now we go on to Flying Types. This is our first Dominance type of Fire and Leaf Green. And this is because of just... You get access to so many legendary Pokemon. You get three of them. Also, you get to start off with Charmander, because it evolves into Charizard at the end. And you've also got other powerhouses like Gyarados and Aerodactyl, Dragonite. It's very, very good. Um, you could do either version, but if you really want to use Scyther, do Fire Red. Uh, the recommended team I'm going to give you for this is going to be Charizard, Dodrio, or Gyarados. 
Dodrio's better out of the box. Gyarados has to set up with Dragon Dance. Scyther. Or just replace it with the other Pokemon that I rec just recommended if you're playing Leaf Green. Dragonite, Articuno, and Zapdos. Ghost type. This is going under impossible. But if not, it would be difficult just because, well, the answer is because of normal types. Because the Ghastly line does not learn any non-ghost type attacks by level up that can do any damage to normal types. Your only option is Curse or Hidden Power until you get access to TMs like, say, Thunderbolt. Now, on the other hand, the Ghastly line in general is pretty good. Even, even Ghastly itself, actually. So you can run all three of the Ghastly line and you can run Mischievous in the post game. Although, if you're going to run Mischievous, play Leaf Green because it is version exclusive. Next up, we go on the grass types. Predictably, this is going to go into subpar. Bad move sets, poor coverage. Early game's easy, but it gets much harder later on. Also, there are a lot of grass and poison types, and they don't do well against psychic types. You're just going to have you're going to have a hard time against Sabrina. Um, I recommend doing this in leaf green version. Because, uh, well, I'll explain. So the team you're going to want is Venusaur, Parasect, Victor Bell, or Vileplume. I consider Victor Bell to be the better option. That's why I recommended Leaf Green. Tangela, Exeggutor, and Jumpluff. If you want, you can replace Parasect with Ivasaur, post Hall of Fame, via Breeding. Now we get to another impossible type, Ground. Although it would be dominant if you could start off with a ground type because of the Neos. Unfortunately, they show up right after you fight Brock at Fire Red Leaf Green, which is infuriating because in the original Gen 1 games, you get them before fighting Brock. Also, in general, ground types are quite powerful. They got good movesets. It's not as powerful because, well, you want to swamp hurt, but it's a good... It's a good type to run. So, the recommended team I'm going to give you for this, um, we're assuming Fire Red here, is going to be Nido King, Nido Queen, Golem, or Rhydon if you can trade, Quagsire, and Pillow Swine. Ice type. Impossible. Although, I will say, if you could start with an Ice type, it would actually be dominant. Because, well, let's be honest, it would largely be a water-type run in all but name. Um, the earliest ice-type you get is actually Jinx, which you get as a trade in Cerulean City. But Seal would be the most balanced option to hack in for a starter. This run would just be very, very powerful. The only real weakness you're going to have in this run are going to be fighting and rock-types just in general. I mean, yeah, Jinx is vulnerable to fire, but that's only relevant for one battle, and you're going to have water and ice types to deal with Blaine anyway. So, recommended teams going to be Dugong, Jinx, Cloyster, Lapras, Articuno, and Pillowswine. You can also run Sneasel, but frankly, Sneasel's pretty shit in Gen 3. If you're going to do that, you need to do Leaf Green. Now we move on to the normal types. Normal type is going to be great. You can do either version with this, and it's because... You're going to have a rough start against Brock, but generally speaking, they have great move pools. Their stats are great all over the board, and you have a lot of options. The team I'm going to recommend for this, you're going to want Raticate or Persian, Clefable, Porygon. You can evolve with the Porygon 2 post game if you can trade. Dodrio, Snorlax, and Kangaskhan. Now we move on to the next dominant type, Poison. Not only do you get access to the Nidos, you also get Venusaur. And, well, actually, there's several uh, solid options. Nido King, Nido Queen, Venusaur, Tentacruel, Weezing, Mach, Golbat, Crobat, and Postgame. Um, yeah, it's really, really good. This is probably the best games to do a Poison-type run in. Recommended team for this is going to be Venusaur, Nido King, Nido Queen, Tentacruel, Crobat, and then Weezing or Mach. 
Now we move on to Psychic. Psychic is impossible because you cannot start with a Psychic type, but it would be dominant if you could, just because Psychic types in general are very powerful. And the only real weakness they have, which is Dark types, is pretty much irrelevant for almost the entire game. Okay, they're also weak to Bug, but let's be honest, Bug type is irrelevant in this run in Gen 3. Uh, I'm going to recommend doing this in Leaf Green, and this is specifically because one of the Pokemon I'm going to recommend is Starmie. Because it's... You can also get Slowbro, but Starmie is faster. And in addition to that, I'm going to recommend Kadabra or Alakazam. Alakazam's better, but you need a trade. Kadabra's good enough. Hypno, Mr. Mime, Exeggutor, and Jinx. If you want, you can replace A with U2 for a victory lap before you take on the Elite Four for the rematch. Rock type. Impossible. But it would be difficult if not. And that is because, unfortunately, uh, they're slow. They have poor move pools. Only a couple of usable special attackers. But they have very low special attack anyway. And they're extremely vulnerable to water types. Recommended team. Graveler or Golem. Um, if you can evolve, if you can trade it, do it. Otherwise, meh. Onyx or Rhyhorn, Rhydon, Aerodactyl, Omastar, Kabutops, and then Tyranitar in the post game, which is really the only reason that make that only reason is even worth it. Now we move on to Steel type. Again, impossible. You can't legitimately start with a Steel type, but if you are gonna, well. Obviously, your only real option would be to hack in Magnemite, but you're not going to have any way to deal with ground types unless you give it hidden power, something like water, ice, or grass. So you're going to have a very hard time. Um, now, ordinarily, the only options you'd be able to get would be Magnemite, Magneton, and Skarmory. But if you're running, say, Fire Red Throwback, that changes. Because in that one, you can use Bill's Teleporter to simulate trade evolutions. But you still need a Metal Coat to evolve Onyx into Steelix and Scyther into Sizzle. Which is why I would recommend doing this in, in Fire Red if you're going to do this in, well, Fire Red Throwback, obviously. You can get one Metal Coat south of the Rocket Hideout on Five Island. And then the other one, you have to beat one of the challenges at the Trainer Tower on Seven Island in order to get one. And lastly, we come to water. Water's dominance, as usual, it's just consistently good. They're very bulky. They're very powerful. You get a lot of them. In fact, water is the second most common type in Gen 1's Pokedex, with 32 of them, behind only poison types with 33. You get to start off with Blastoise, so, well, Squirtle, rather, you evolve into Blastoise. So, that alone is great. Um... Then you can run either Gyarados, Polyrath, or Zumarill. And if you want to run a Zumarill, you got to do Leaf Green, because Meryl is exclusive to it. Omastar, Kabutops, Tentacruel, Slowbro, or Vaporeon, Starmie, that's also Leaf Green exclusive, so, yeah. And Lapras. And there you have it. Basically, half of the types are not available, but the rest are, well, you got some that are really good, a couple that are okay, and a couple that are a bit hard, but not necessarily luck-based, as long as you know what you're doing. And, uh, well, I think that'll do it. Like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, check out my Rumble page, and I will catch you all next time.